Jesus said to his disciples, whoever loves me will keep my word and my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you, do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me say, I am going away and I will come back to you. If you love me, you would rejoice that I am going to my Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. Hello and welcome to Close to Walk Catholic Communications. I'm Father By, your host, and we're glad that you can join us. This is a farewell address, but a beautiful one. This particular line, if you love me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. Just yesterday, at the funeral home, a parishioner whose 87-year-old mother had been dying, and she's kind of been in a panic mode. She just, you know, wanted to here all the time and everything. Got to the funeral home yesterday, and she was just mellow. How you doing? I'm good. We're where we need to be. But most of all, mom's where she needs to be. She said, you know, I really panicked. She said, I got so afraid. And she said, you know, I got to the point that I said, God, it's time. Please, God. Uh, I, I, don't want, I don't want mom to have to stay like this anymore. Let her go be with daddy. Uh, she said, you know, my mom was always so full of life. And, you know, for us kids, there were five of us. She said, you know, she was, she was our everything. And I just watched her become a lady I didn't know anymore. I mean, I still loved her, and she's still my mom, all that. But she wasn't that lady anymore. And she said, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I'm, I'm glad she's at peace. I'm glad she's not that old lady in the bed anymore. And you know, ever since my own grandmother died, who was really the matriarch of our family, uh, I'm convinced that God allows people that we love to suffer for our sake. Not for theirs. They're not suffering for their sins, you know, they're suffering for our sake because he had that lively, wonderful, strong, cooking, wonderful Lebanese grandmother just up and not woken up one morning. We would have all panicked. But now that age and illness had turned into someone we didn't know, we were able to rejoice for her. We were able to let her go. We didn't want her not to be herself and be here anymore. And she didn't want to. And it had been a long time since she had seen my Jitti, so we were glad to let her go. And our Lord says that. If you love me, you would rejoice for me. And I think we do. But it isn't them that we're crying for. It's ourselves we're crying for. You know, I've never lived without my grandmother. I've never lived without my mom. I've never lived without my, whatever the case may be. 
It's my first time in life I've ever had to do without it. Well, yeah, you only die once. But, you know, that challenge of being able to get to the point where we rejoice that God is taking care of people that we love and miss. I had a situation one time, and I, until this day, and, and I was a young priest. That's been a long time ago. But, and, and I'll never, I celebrated the 63rd wedding anniversary. Kids threw them a party. That weekend they were going on a cruise. They went on a cruise, had a wonderful time. They're both healthy, fit. They love to dance. That's what they were going to do every night on the cruise. A couple months later, he didn't wake up the next morning. She was so angry at God. She never set foot in church again and made her children promise that she would not have a church funeral. She never forgave God for 63 years of marriage, good health, life, and everything else. I see people who go through this, and I think to myself, what do we really expect out of life? You know, how realistic do, are we to take life thinking that death's not going to happen to me or it's not going to happen to somebody that I love? Or if it does happen to someone that I love, I've been cheated or shortchanged and that sort of thing. Um, you know, to me, it's a, a great challenge to be with the parent when their child is in that, that coffin. That's, I know none of us have any guarantees. I, I, I know all that. It just seems very unnatural that a parent buries a child. It just does. You know, it's not, but uh, I, I, I understand that. But like I, I, I told this girl the other day as she buried her 87-year-old mom and said, baby, you don't need a refund. You got everything you could ever want out of a mama. You had long life, long health, great person, great faith, all these things. You don't need a refund. And when our Lord makes that statement, if you love me, you would rejoice with me. For those of you who are dealing with grief, and it's understandable, but when you were a young couple get, getting married, who promised you that you were going to have 50 years, 60 years, 70 years? Nobody promised you that. You know, and nowadays, if you have had a marriage for that many years, and you wanted that marriage for that many years, God bless you. A lot of people don't have, you know, happy marriages for a very long time with the number of divorces that we have. I had a little couple. And I married him. He, he, was getting ready to, he was getting ready to go to law school. Went out to play basketball one night. Came home, took a shower, and dropped dead in the shower. He was 24 years old. Getting ready to go to law school. They hadn't been married a year yet. Our ways are not God's ways. I, you know, is that a tough one? Absolutely. Are you feel like there's no reason to live? Absolutely. But does gratitude ever enter into it? It's better to have loved than lost and never to have loved at all. The old poet insisted that not to love is to the loss already. There are times when I'm skeptical about this business of loving. I reach out in tenderness to get slapped down in scorn. You can love and possibly get hurt. You cease loving, you cease living. That sort of mentality and that challenge in our lives of what he said, if you love me, you'd be great, you'd be happy for me. I'm going to the Father, and the Father and I are one. We can't do that unless we're able to look at our lives and be very, very grateful for what is. Many people look at their lives and think about what they don't have. How many of us look at our lives and think about what we do have or did have or have had and feel like we've been very, very blessed? How many of us can look at that? 
You know, I, I really got to admit, I didn't appreciate what I had until I left home. Now, of course, you know, you're living at home, and the parents are wanting to tell you no. They're the ones who aggravate you. They're the ones who don't let you do this and all that stuff. And, you know, you, you go through these juvenile things, and you think they're so terrible. Then you get to college, and you have people saying, I don't know, dude, you want to go to Florida for Thanksgiving or something? And well, you're not going home to your family? Uh, no, mom's with her boyfriend, dad's with his boyfriend, you know, whatever. And, you know, family doesn't get together, no. You know, they've been divorced since I was three. No, we, you know, we go to McDonald's for, uh, you know, and you just start looking around. And it wasn't until I left that I realized how much I had to be grateful for. And believe it or not, it was during that time in a college seminary, and this overwhelming sense of gratitude for what was is what prompted my decision to say, okay, God, you know, I'm signing the check. You fill it out. Whatever you want, I'm showing up. Because there's an overwhelming sense of gratitude. How many of us look at our lives and have overwhelming sense of gratitude? I'll tell you what. If you're struggling with that, and I love what Mother Teresa used to say, she said, if, you, if you're depressed, go help somebody. That gets you out of your depression, helping somebody. If you're depressed, go walk AJC Bowes Road in Calcutta. You, you think your life sucks? Just go walk, okay? Come back. And it's not till we, we understand. You know, and I would look at these little kids and I would go, why wasn't I born there? Why wasn't I sleeping in the street? Why wasn't I bathing out of some pump on the side of the street and cooking out of a pan on a cow pie when mom could get something for us to eat? Why me? Why me the good stuff? Not why me the bad stuff. Why me the blessings? Why me the gifts? See, when our Lord said, if you love me, you would rejoice with me. Well, if we're grateful to God for what we have, then it's a lot easier to lose. But if we're never really grateful, we're always gonna be better in life. We're always gonna be better about anything and everything from someone hitting our car in a parking lot to losing the, the most important person in our life. We're always gonna be better. But when we, when we can look at our lives and be grateful we can answer that question. If you love me, you'd be grateful for me. And I realized what a gift it was, and now God wants it back. I realized what a gift I had, and now God thinks it's time for me not to have it anymore. I was so lucky to have had it for one year, for five years, for 20 years. That ability to have gratitude is the ability that allows us to take and to give what God asks of us and to be grateful in the midst of it. And when we can say, God, I've been blessed. My mother was 87 years old. Wasn't she wonderful? Wasn't she a gift? God, I'm going to miss her, but I'm going to see her again. So I'm glad she's with God and not sick anymore. So gratitude enables us to do. That's what we're called to look for. Stay with us. We have a lot more to talk about when you come back. Hi, I'm Father Jeff Bay from Closer Walk Catholic Communications. Thank you for being here today, and a special thanks for the support that you give us. First of all, your prayerful support we so desperately need, and also your financial support. We are donor-driven, and that would, is what keeps us on the air today. As you well know, the truth is in great demand and in very short supply, and mainstream media is not going to bring you the truth of the Gospels of our Lord Jesus Christ because that's not socially acceptable and it's not politically correct. Certainly we all realize that when this life journey is over, we don't stand before the Supreme Court, we stand before the throne of God. Therefore, with great clarity and great charity, to pronounce the truth of the Gospel is important. Your prayers, your financial support enables us to do that. So we thank you, and may God bring you closer in your walk with the Lord each day. God bless you.
My peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. Hello and welcome back to Closer Walk Catholic Communications. I'm Father Bayer, your host, and I'm glad that you can join us. There was a line in a movie called, Oh God, I'm going back 30 years, I know. But for those of you who don't remember, there's a movie called, Oh God, and George Burns, who I think went to grade school with God anyway, George Burns played God. And it was, you know, it was a you know, cheesy little movie with John Denver playing the shopkeeper and George Burns playing God. And throughout the whole thing, you know, there, you know, he's showing he's God. Here, pick a card, any card, you know, cheesy stuff, all right? But anyway, at the very end, as God is walking off into the sunset, uh, he says, keep the faith, kid. And he said, how do you keep the faith? With all the war and with all the hate and with everything going on, how do you keep the faith? And... Uh, God, George Burns, turns around and said, perhaps if more people had the faith, things would be different. And when our Lord says, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you, but I don't give you peace the way the world gives you peace. Uh, happiness, like peace, is an inside job. No one, no one can take away my peace. I have to forfeit it. I have to give it up. People can aggravate me. I mean, they can make me think I'm going up one side of the wall and down the other. But when it comes to peace, that no one can take that from you. Things can upset my peace. Gosh, I didn't see that coming. But peace is something that Christ promises. And it's not an external thing. Well, I'm going to be at peace when those stupid people I work for start treating me like I deserve to be treated. Ain't going to happen. I'm going to be at peace when this country elects some half-decent, honest people to lead us. Ain't going to happen. I'm going to be at peace when these crazy extremist religions quit killing innocent people. Ain't going to happen. I'm going to be at peace when my spouse and my children finally start living the way they should and not acting like idiots. It's not going to happen. If that is what determines our peace, it's never going to happen. You know what you're saying? You're saying someone else is the puppeteer. They have the strings, and they, they, they make me crazy, they make me happy, they make me sad, they make me whatever. And Christ promises a peace that this world can't give. Funny story, true story. Years ago, Pan Am was still flying, so that's how long ago it was. I had a meeting in Hartford, Connecticut, was going to New York, flying to Rome. Priest was going to meet me in New York. We are flying to Rome together. I had the opportunity and an appointment to say Mass with Pope John Paul II at the time. Anyway, I'm in the JFK airport in the Pan Am terminal. They page me. Priest on the phone, he's all aggravated, everything like that. He forgot his passport, so he can't go on the trip. He'll try to come later, whatever. He's all frustrated. He said, well, Sorry about that, man, but I'm going to Rome, so, you know, I hope you get there. Call me, I'll be staying here. So anyway, we get about two and a half hours out of New York. And, you know, they serve a drink, and then they come back and they serve a second drink, and then they start serving food. Well, I was in a jump seat, which means the steward and, you know, the steward and steward sit right in front of you, they're facing you and everything. Whenever you hit turbulence in an airplane, I just look at them. They do this for a living, okay? You know, I'm not you know, worried about anything. If they're not worried, I'm not worried, okay? They you, know, they know the ups and downs of airplanes. 
Well, I mean, the god of aviation took after us, okay? I mean, boom, things are jerking. You know, all of a sudden, you know, the guy, you know, tells us, you know, everyone, please be seated, take your seat. Then he tells all the, the people, discontinued service, steward and stewardess, please take your seat. They leave that. The courts are thumping over. There's food, there's drink, there's everything up and down there. I mean, we've gotten this ricochet action. I felt like a half an hour is probably wasn't five minutes. But anyway, the steward and stewardess is sitting right in front of me, okay? And she gets hysterical. She's screaming. He's slapping her. The barf bags are coming out. Everybody, I'm sitting in this plane. Well, now all of a sudden, the guy that the priest nobody wants to sit next to for eight hours. I'm pretty popular, okay? But anyway, I'm thinking, you know, the guy's giving instructions for a crash landing in the water. We're two hours out of New York. And I'm thinking, I'm going to die. You know, I mean, this is the movie. I'm living it. I'm going to die. And I was okay. I mean, you know, sure. I, it, but I, I, I thought, you know, I could die, and God knows I tried. Far from perfect. God knows I tried. I felt okay facing God knowing that I tried. I felt really bad for my parents. You know, their son was going to die in a plane crash. And then I said, and that son of a gun who missed the airplane, he's going to be a pallbearer at my funeral, okay? <laughs> but the funny thing was, and, and, and really, I, it, 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 it was the strangest sensation. But, you know, when they're talking about a crash land, you're two hours out of New York, you're over the Atlantic, you know, you know, you, you're fish food. So I... I was okay with that. It didn't happen. Um, but <laughs> I had to tell you that it didn't happen. I'm here, right? Okay. But anyway, the thing is, is there really does come a time where whatever happens, I'm good with God. I'm good with God. I'm good. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen next. But that was a, that was a big step for me. Now, I still have plenty more sins since then that, that I have to make up for. But I think I can still say God knows I'm trying. Am I successful? Some days I do pretty good. Some days not so much. That challenge in our own life of seeking peace has nothing to do with whether or not we're able to change the world around us. That challenge of peace has to do with whether or not we can change the world within us. You know, the whole thing, what lies behind us, what lies before us is not nearly as important as what lies within us. And if what lies within us is a heart that longs for God. I mean, I, I really want God to be pleased with me. I really want to be pleasing in the sight of God. And God knows when I, you know, go off my nut and act like an idiot and get all upset about something and I pull myself back down. God knows I didn't, you know, that sort of challenge of giving us the peace that this world can't give. And when someone out there is able to walk into our lives and completely take away our peace, we never had it. Because a spouse, a child, an employer, an employee, a friend, a romantic interest, or whatever, if our happiness and our peace depends upon them, you will never, ever be in control of your own life, your own destiny, and your own future. But if our peace rest alone and God alone and knowing that I'm pleasing in his sight that doesn't mean that everyone is going to be whistling and bluebirds are going to be flying overhead what it means is is regardless of what today brings or tomorrow brings I'm going to be okay because God's got my back it doesn't mean I'm going to live doesn't mean I'm going to get well. Doesn't mean I'm not going to have some cross to carry tomorrow. But it means that 
if I'm going through that and I feel God's presence and God feels my desire, then I'm good. That you can achieve. How do you do that? Uh, let me tell you a great step for that is adoration. Adoration before the Lord, me and God, and we're just going to talk it out. And sure, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to say, God, please, my mother, my brother, my sister, my son, my daughter, my best friend, we're going to do all that. It's okay. God understands. God knows our wants. But in the middle of that, we bring ourselves to God and we express the longing of our human heart. Even in the community celebration of the Mass, we don't do that. It's kind of a corporate we. Taking time to go before the Blessed Sacrament as an individual, God, you and I alone, you know. And I mean, here I am, naked in the presence of God, you know my thoughts, you know my every want, you know my every deed, you know the good things I've done, the bad things I've done, you know all that. And I'm bringing it to you. You do that often enough in prayer and in meditation. And there is an overwhelming sense that we've connected. I'm still living at risk. I still can't have anything happen to me Tomorrow that a person who's never even said God's name can have happened to them. But it's okay with me, because God's got my back. We're okay. God knows I tried. God knows I desired. God knows I sought. God knows I failed. And God knows I kept trying. That's a piece that this world can't give. You read the paper, you watch the news, you want to get crazy, watch a rerun of it, okay? A lot of scary stuff out there. The only thing that's going to take away the fear is not changing the world. It's changing the world in which Christ lives inside of me. There I find hope. There I find strength. There I'm able to face tomorrow, not knowing what's coming. But as long as God's with me, we're going to make it. A peace that this world can't give. We thank you for being with us. May each day bring you closer in your walk with the Lord. God bless you.